Well, hello. Welcome to this week's edition of The Good News Show. I'm Pastor Cheryl. I'm Olivia. And if you are just joining us, normally Pastor Rick is here with me, but he has uh, another project that he's working on. So uh, we rescued Olivia from the control room. And so she's going to join us today. And so if you're a regular viewer, we're glad to have Olivia on this side of the camera. Yay! <laughs> and what a, uh, an appropriate show uh, that we're going to do today, minus uh, the music, unfortunately, that Pastor Rick normally supplies for us, but you do not want to hear either one of us sing. Nope. So <laughs> there's your little bonus blessing right there. Uh, but this week's program is uh, we're going to talk about the heart. And so here's the slide that's going to give us the definition of the heart. And it's called the central or innermost part of something, like very much or love. And you know what? We just celebrated Valentine's oh, Day. Oh, so how appropriate. Yes. That now we're, we're continuing on with the heart. Wait, and, what did we do for Valentine's Day? Uh, well, actually, that's probably the reason why we're minus Pastor Rick as we're filming right now, because he is putting together for all the music oh, for yes. the special program uh, that we did down at the tab. Um, that's the tabernacle, in case you don't know. Uh, so they always do a wonderful banquet yes. for everyone. And you know what I really like is that uh, we did one last year, so this is now the second annual uh, Valentine's Day banquet that they do and what I really enjoyed about last year and I'm hoping that it continues on is that even though of course Valentine's Day you think of couples and it's very yeah. romantic well uh, here it was it was very it wasn't like segregated it wasn't like here's a couple at this table and then there's a couple of single people that just randomly had to sit there it just everybody just kind of intermingled it was more yeah. like a family yeah. Valentine's thing you um, know? Oh, and the kids weren't there this year. We were outside of the tabernacle at this fireplace area, and we had a huge bonfire, ate s'mores. Uh, I heard s'mores were... Yes, yes, and we danced, and it was a lot of fun. Yeah, so, so see, they even got the youth involved, so that's, that's awesome. Yes. So, yay! But let's now go into our good sayings, and, and Liv and I will read them as they come up on your screen. So here's our first good saying. To be kind is more important than to be right. Many times what people need is not a brilliant mind that speaks, but a special heart that listens. Every day is God's way of saying one more time. Go live life, make a difference, touch one's heart, encourage one's mind, and inspire one's soul. Mm -hmm, that's good. When my heart is overwhelmed, lead me to the rock that is higher than I. You change your life by changing your heart. Mm, and I like this one. Tune my heart to sing thy grace. <clears throat> Sometimes God doesn't change your situation because he's trying to change your heart. That is so true. And I like this one. You don't stop being God's child when you mess up. God knows your heart and he loves you. All the ways that he changes my heart proves he loves me too much to leave me just as I am. Oh, yeah, I think we've heard Dad say that before, that God loves us. And this one is, God couldn't be f physically with us, so he gave us dogs. And notice that dog spells backward is God, and they both show unconditional love. God blesses those whose hearts are pure, for they will see God. They will see God, absolutely. And now we're going into my favorite segment, and we're going to try not to cry, but, you know. This I can't promise anything. <laughs> I know. She's never been on this side. She hears us, like, sniffling every time we do this segment. And little do you guys know, when I'm back there, I'm crying, oh, too. Oh, are you? So. Okay. Well, get ready for a hum of the last one, because even though I was... When I was reading these, uh, you know, I sit there in my office and I'm like, the tears are running down. But guess what else it is? You may not know this because I just found this out, but this actually, how coincidentally that Valentine's Day falls in it, but this is actually Random Acts of Kindness Week. So that's going to come up on your screen. Hey. Celebrating this entire week with acts from the heart. And as I said, appropriate because Valentine's Day was Saturday. 
People all over the country are doing random acts of kindness towards others. And guess what? They reap some benefits as well. First of all, kindness makes us happier. On a spiritual level, we feel good when we do something kind for somebody else. On a physical level, that good feeling is produced by a chemical in our brains that elevates our level of dopamine. It's kind of like a natural high, and it actually has a name. They call it helper's high, so who knew about that? Huh. Second, kindness comes with emotional warmth. That emotional warmth, that warm fuzzy feeling, releases another chemical called nitric oxide, and this is in our blood vessels. It actually expands the blood vessels, which reduces blood pressure and makes our hearts healthier. Dun, da, da, da. That's good to know. Okay, and third, and I'm liking this one, third, kindness slows the aging process. Some of our poor lifestyle choices affect our aging in our bodies. Now research has, is showing that the warmth we experience doing an act of kindness releases a chemical called oxytocin. Oxytocin, I hope I'm right. In, oh, ox, oxytocin. Oxytocin reduces the levels of free radicals and inflammation and that affects mostly our cardiovascular system and by doing that, again, it slows the signs of aging. So there we you go. We have a science lesson in this too today. I know. How about that little health lesson as we go? My favorite subject in school, by the way. Dun, dun, dun. And fourth, kindness makes for better relationships. Now, this is kind of a no-brainer, right? If yeah. you're nice to people, they're nice to you. But don't we all like someone who does something kind for us? Yes. Now, it creates a bond between two people. Okay, now on this next slide, you're gonna see uh, a young couple in Pensacola, they actually canceled their traditional wedding to give back. And guess where they gave back? Right on the slide, Pensacola Humane Society. That's an awesome way to build a connection. They went and helped all the animals that are wow. in that animal shelter. So wow. bless their little hearts. And fifth, last but not least, kindness is contagious. When mm -hmm. you're kind, you inspire others to be kind. Studies show that it's actually creating a ripple effect. Remember that movie, Pay It Forward? I think we've done that on your movie segment. Yes. Okay, those acts of kindness, it's like a wave. They touch yes. our hearts and it keeps on going. It's also kind of like a domino effect. When exactly. you line up dominoes and like you flick one, they all They fall. all start going, that's exactly yep. right. Okay, and my next slide that's coming up, this poor man, his name is Mike Heim. He's a volunteer fireman from a small town in Maryland. Well, last Friday, he and his squad answered a call for a house on fire. There's the house burning there. When the crew arrived on the scene, Mike was shocked to see that, guess what? It was his house on fire. But he remained calm, and with the help of his other friends and, and volunteers, they put the fire out, but not before the whole house was destroyed. He lost everything to the flames. Well. Mike's fellow firemen put his cause on the internet. They made a little campaign for him, and even the community rallied. Now, Mike needed $50,000 to cover the value of his home. So far, he's halfway there. He was amazed by all the outpouring of support and find it was hard to believe how many people remembered him and why not. He had helped a lot of them in the community over the past 15 years when they were in need since he was a volunteer. Yeah. So hats off to small town folk. We just love small towns. Okay, my next one, get ready. This is, I'm going to say a tissue warning and that means you need a tissue for this. This is where we always start losing it. As you know, I love my animal segments. And this is Darby. And Darby is running the race of his life. He was born, as you can see by the slide, he was born with deformed front legs and no paws. He was destined to be destroyed until an organization called Peace and Paws stepped in to find a foster family to take Derby in. Sherry Pontanova saw the appeal online and couldn't stop crying over this dog. I mean, when you look at this little dog, it's no wonder. She and her husband agreed to take him in to foster him. When she got him there, she realized she just had to do more for him. Now, this, this goes above and beyond being a foster for uh, any type of animal. She marshaled help from an animal ortho care hospital in Virginia 
and she contacted some designers of a South Carolina tech firm that used a 3D digital design system to sculpturally, I mean to digitally sculpt the perfect organic shapes and curves to match Darby's shape. And I've got a picture there, the next slide is the actual 3D print that they were constructing. They made special rubber cups, you can see there, and the rigid spokes on the base. And this, because it was a digital printer that they did, it only took a few hours for this whole contraption to be made. And they shipped them right out to Sherry and got them on Darby. They started out kind of small because obviously he had never walked a day in his life. And they put him on and he just was like starting to walk. They were amazed. And pretty soon he's going to get ones that will actually bring him up so that he's not kind of bent over like that. And through the power of this 3D system, Darby's now able to play, as you'll see from the next slide, for the first time in his life, he's able to play with other dogs. He's never done that before. And in the next slide, you'll see that not only here's this dog that could never walk, he has not walked a day in his life because of being crippled, and now he, every day he runs two to three miles with Sherry and her husband. He even runs ahead of him sometimes, you can tell by this slide. And by the way, Sherry and her husband have now adopted Derby into their forever family. So you go, Derby. You run that race, by golly. So anyway. OK. I know every time I get to these good works, I mean, people are doing some amazing things. And that's all from their heart, from the goodness and kindness of their heart, not just for people and not just for animals, but they are just getting out there doing some good things for people. And speaking of good things, Liv, we're going to have you come and do your good movie of the week. So since you don't have to like run back and forth, dun -da -da -da, your good movie is one of your okay. favorite ones. Are you ready? Because we cried at this one too. Oh my gosh. Okay. All right. <laughs> we're getting it together here. All right. Okay, this week's good movie. This week's good movie is Dolphin Tale 2. And I mean 2. I'm saying 2. 2. Okay? Alright. It's about developing leadership skills, learning that animals have emotions, and realizing that unconditional love still wins. I love this movie. My dad was away on uh, Man's Weekend or... He was in Florida, I think. Oh, no, he was in Florida that yes, week. Yes, okay. Yes. One of his many vacations. He was, well, <laughs> he was actually helping a friend, so again, here is an act of, yes. of good work. He flew out to Florida to help out. Somebody. He did, so we decided yes. if he was in Florida, we were going to watch a movie about yeah. being in Florida. Yeah. And this was at the Clearwater Aquarium. Yes, we had a mother-daughter night. That's right. Popcorn and dolphin tail, too. Yes. And I think we had some candy there, too. Oh, yeah, maybe we had a little chocolate. Maybe. Maybe. <laughs> we're not committing to that. But so we had a nice family. We had a nice mother daughter night, and -daughter night. we watched Dolphin Tale Two. Amazing movie, by the way. It's I think it's kind of hard to compare both movies. A, a little bit, a little bit different, but just again, it, yeah. it shows. I mean, pretty much everything we do, showing people that are stepping up, doing something above and beyond themselves. Yeah. So I think that's where that good movie segment is, yes. and that was probably the longest good movie segment we've, we've ever, ever done. done. <laughs> there you go. Anyway, see, that's what happens when you two get two girls in here talking. We're you like, know, nah, right? Nah, 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 nah. Anyway, well, we better jump right into the good verses and the good quotes, or we're going to wow. be doing an extra long show. Yes. <laughs> All right. Well, our good verse for uh, the beginning of the show here is, Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a steadfast spirit within me. And that's from Psalms 51.10. So we could pretty much end the show right there because that's all what we want is if God can create in us a clean heart, then we will, we will just be on top of the world. Yes. And do you want to read yes. the Billy Graham quote? Or as Dad says, Billy Joel. Billy Joel, but now we're going to say Billy, Billy Graham. Graham. <laughs> so go ahead and read the first quote. It's going to come up on your screen. The heart symbolizes the center of our moral, spiritual, and intellectual life. It is a seat of our... Conscious. Conscious in life. There you go. That's right. The center of everything. And here's another good verse that's going to come up. 
God blesses those hearts, those whose hearts are pure, for they will see God. And we said that, that was one, that of, was our one good, of our good yes. sayings. <laughs> well, you know, I guess it, it's okay to, to repeat this because the more we hear it, uh, the more we will start to remember it. And that's basically what it is when we do, um, you know, these scripture verses. That's what we want it to get in where? Into In our, our heart. Yeah. I, what is that saying? I think they say the longest distance is from your brain to your heart. 18 inches, and sometimes that's the longest distance because, you know, you'll sit there and you'll try to read the scripture in the Bible, but until it seeps into your heart, we tend not to act on it. And that's when we say we have a lot of head knowledge. Um, we, I think we probably all know, especially as we get older, we'll know people that, you know, I have a hard time remembering addresses of verses in the Bible. I may not know what page it's on. I may not know the, the verse and the chapter number. I, I'm hoping that God sees my heart when I try to um, maybe uh, act out the scripture instead of memorizing the chapter and verse, but I think we all know people and call them the head knowledge. They can spout out all the verses they want, and I question but whether the, or not. That, yeah. I question whether or not do they really know what that means, which is judging. So I shouldn't do that. But you know, sometimes we're going to call that discernment. I'm going to reel that back. And call. <laughs> sometimes we can discern when people are not actually understanding the scripture. Wasn't that so much better? Yes. yes, I got right out of that judgment thing because we certainly don't want to do that. But I think, you know, we all can discern some of those people that, you know, you're, you're questioning whether they've gotten a whole grasp on, on God. And you know what? When we meet those people, it's probably, a, uh, I think God would probably want us to pray that God can, can work at changing their heart because, yes. I, I, you know, as we said in one of the sayings, I think God loves us. Uh, too much to leave us where we are, and he does want us to grow and and, and growing out I mean, of our heart. Sometimes I'm even like that. I I know Bible verses, and you know, I can I can quote back some Bible verses, and I don't know exactly where they are, but I can I know what the Bible verse says. But sometimes I don't act on it all the time. Yes, well, you know, you know, so even it's not it's not just other people too. It's sometimes yourself. You know, and I think people get hung up on. Um, the word mature, and I'm going to digress a little bit because there, obviously I'm just sitting here with Olivia and, and the fact that she even said that just shows you how mature she is because what 15-year-old well. kid is going to sit here and say that? And yet mature has nothing to do with chronological age. I mean, Maturity Olivia, is doing something that you don't want to do. And again, I prove my point. Here she is 15 <laughs> and she has more maturity than sometimes other people, including myself, I mean, sometimes I'll, you know, dig my heels in and, you know, I'm, you know, not going to do it, you know, which shows immaturity. So it's not, it has nothing to do with chronological age, but I think it's how, how God mm -hmm. is, is growing inside your heart. Yeah. And so I think, you know, yay, we're getting to see how God is growing in her heart. And, and I have a great dad <clears throat> and a great youth pastor, in case you're watching this. <laughs> Just putting that out there. Great youth pastor, yeah, too. I think, you know, obviously um, we are, are so blessed because we do have, you know, Pastor Rick, and she calls him Dad, and I call him Babe. But, uh, <laughs> or Honey. Or Honey. But I think, you know, like we were talking about the other day, how blessed we are to be such a close-knit family yeah. that, um, you know, when it says, you know, God knits your hearts together, uh, the, this last two years that we've been on sabbatical, how close we, our hearts are, are knitting. And, and we have our moments, oh, you know, gosh, doesn't everybody. But I think the fact that we can rally quicker, um, mm -hmm. I think, is really a, a testament on how God has, has knitted our hearts and how we've learned so much about grace. And, you know, I, we'll, we'll never... Like earlier, for, for example. Yeah. Yes, yes, yes. I had a little bit of an attitude. Yeah, well, sometimes we have those meltdowns, but again, I don't think you We snap back pretty fast. Yeah, and I think even, you know, we're talking about the heart and how, you know, uh, changing the heart is, is, is really what we want God to do because, I mean, yeah, I don't know if I've got it in here, but, you know, we always say, oh, listen to your heart. Well, sometimes your heart can lead you astray because mm -hmm. there is such a thing as an evil heart. 
Mm -hmm. And so we want God to make in us a clean heart and a heart with his righteousness. Sounds like one of dad's songs. I know, probably it is, because he's written songs <laughs> about scriptures. But I, I really think that we really can't do a whole lot without having God starting to grow in our heart. And, and that means changing our heart, because, you know, we can either have a pure heart and out of it will come goodness and kindness and God's righteousness and especially grace. And I don't think there's anything we can do um, and talk about that we're not going to talk about grace yeah. because we live with Pastor Rick who is, you know, if I had to term him, I would call him Mr. Grace because I, I, I can attest that I've learned more about grace. I'm sure you've learned more about grace. I mean, his Bible studies center around grace and I all of the the testimonies that we've got from people about um, about dad yeah uh, and pastor Rick is that you know he just exemplifies what God wants us to know about grace and sometimes like people don't always say what they want from their heart and I mean so like yeah like God already knows what you want in your heart so might as well just ask him for it I mean Hey, you might be disappointed sometimes if he doesn't give it to you right away, but you have to have patience. Yeah. Yeah. Or he might not want you to have it because he Or not, that, yes. Yeah, because we might want something that's not good for that's us. Actually what, that's actually what our youth group was about this week is how oh. you have to have patience on, like, God's going to, God already knows what's in your heart. He's, just, he's giving you the appropriate time to either give it to you or not to give it to you. Or... Or here's the thing, too, um, which, you know, I've been learning, too, is that you might not be ready for it right now. It doesn't, yeah. doesn't mean you, you're going to get it, but he may want you to be a little more educated. It's kind of like, I think we talked about this before. It's like, you know, you're getting to very close to being able to drive the car. Well, I'm just not going to give you the keys right now. You've not had any formal, tra I mean, you drive around the parking lot here. Oh, we probably shouldn't say that, but just a little bit around the parking the lot. The parking lot is private property. It's yeah. And I have a good but, trainer. But I wouldn't just give you the keys and say, okay, head out on the highway without giving yeah. you, you know, there's a lot of education and there's tests, there's practices, yes. you know. So I think God does sometimes that too. We might want something in our heart, but. And I've passed all my practice tests. Yeah. I'm just putting that out there. Yeah. <laughs> so anyway. people know I'm a safe driver. Yes. Well, let's go back yes. to our good Billy, verse. No, well, actually, Billy Graham has a quote that we have to do. We just did that one. We're yes. going to go. We're going to go to the verse, which says, okay. Take my yoke upon you. Let me teach you, because I am humble and gentle at heart. You will find rest for your souls. And now... The now Billy, a Billy Graham quote. There you go. Don't hesitate to take God whatever is on your heart. He already knows it anyway, but he doesn't want you to bear its pain or celebrate its joy alone. Oh, that's nice. That's what we were just yes. saying. Yes. Okay, why don't you read this next one? Okay. The heart of a man, through small, though small, though small, is big enough for Christ to live in if man will only make room for him. Isn't that so true? Yes. That is so true. You definitely have to make room for God in your yeah. heart. Absolutely. Put him as number one on your list. Okay. <laughs> and here's another good verse. Come and listen to my counsel. I'll share my heart with you and make you wise. Oh, my gosh. We're, I mean, that's, that's basically, if we just summed up reading scriptures... Of course, we come, we're going to read scriptures, that's God's counsel. All of his promises, all of his teachings, everything is, is in scripture. And we know God's heart. I mean, when you talk uh, about somebody, uh, and I think Pastor Rick has said this before, if I came to you and said, uh, you know, Pastor Rick said, you know, something that was not grace-filled, you who know Pastor Rick say, gee, that, that doesn't sound like, like Pastor Rick because yeah. he, you know. Well, obviously, when you start reading the scriptures, you're going to know God's heart. That's, he's sharing mm -hmm. in his word. He's sharing his heart with all of us. And boy, you I don't want to be wise. I don't know about you. but <laughs> Sometimes I'm, also, like, I know people say, always bring your Bible to church and all that. Mm -hmm. And, I mean, sometimes you... It's a good idea, too, because sometimes your pastors, they could be saying something, and it won't exactly match up with what the Bible is saying. So you have to make sure God's heart and, or God is right in that, in your pastor's heart, or, because you have to, like, make sure the verses match up, you know? That's, that's a good point, and a lot of times if, um, 
like we'll have different versions of the Bible, and that's mm -hmm. a whole other thing. I mean, you know, some people are really stuck on the King James version, and that's okay, but that was King James putting what he thought into the Bible. Um, I like the Amplified Bible because it gives you a lot of like side inf information that you can kind of grasp, and it speaks to me in everyday language, and I, yeah. I'm pretty simple. And yeah, I, like I don't like all that thy and... Yeah, yeah. I, have to, I have to, you know, does it speak to me? And, and you know, the best version of any Bible and is what speaks also, to you. And also, like Dad did, he used a couple different versions last, yes. last week in his sermon. He did... Yeah, yeah because he it's used, a, a different yeah. interpretation, but the words change a little bit. Sometimes you just have to go to a different yeah, version because, of the Bible for yeah, you to understand. Yeah, because what works, what, what I understand might not be what you understand. Yeah. And so it's important to find one that... Um, you understand and that you can have God speak to you through. Yes, because yes. then you'll give up. And it's so important to get... I mean, who does not want to be wise? And that's, It's like when you read a book. You're not going to read a book on... Uh, love, if you don't like that cat, that category, you would go read a book on spiritual or something like that. Something you know, like that. well, don't read a book that you. Let's see what Billy Graham's understand. got to say. Go ahead and read that quote. I am convinced that when a man sincerely searches for God with all his heart, God will reveal Himself in some way. And we just said that in exactly. any books. I love. I, boy, <laughs> don't you love how the Holy Spirit is just like zinging this yes. along? So here's the next verse kind of like coming up. Never let loyalty and kindness leave you. Tie them around your neck as a reminder. Write them deep within your heart. Like a bow tie. Oh, like a bow tie. Tie it around your and neck. remind you. <laughs> yes. And, and write it on your heart. Yes. Well, you want to read the Billy Graham yes. quotes coming up on your screen. Read along. When scripture talks about the heart, it's not talking about that life-sustaining muscle. It's talking about our entire inner being. The heart, the seat of our, is the seat of our emotions, the seat of decisive action, and the seat of belief as well as doubt. That's right. We were talking about that earlier. That mm -hmm. your heart can be pure and clean, or it can be evil and doubtful. Yes. And that's why it's so important. It can mislead you sometimes. Oh, yes. Yes, because <laughs> yes. as a teenager, and you know, we've talked about this with you a lot, but you know, I think one thing that especially drives uh, Pastor Rick crazy is when you know girls will see a, a star or something on TV and it's like, oh my gosh, I love, love them. Yes, and what they don't even love? know who it is. Now, what is that? Lust. Yes. Or when we see when we see um, uh, like a house or a car, we say, oh, I love that. That's like that's infatuation. We're or, infatuated. Yeah. With, yeah. Or again, that could be lust because it says we mm -hmm. will lust things. And uh, yeah, so <clears throat> a Hummer. <clears throat> <clears throat> Gas prices. <laughs> Okay. But you know what? I think we're already at the end, end of, of our thing. time. So I and just, we're running out of time. We are. So we want to make sure we remind you. This is uh, the longest show that you and me ever done together. I know. We just we don't we're, go like 14 we're minutes. We're chatty Cathy's. Well, there you we know, go. you get us, get us on a, a <laughs> show about uh, kindness and love, and away we go. We just kind of yes. get wound up here. But we do want to remind you to, uh, to come back on Wednesday nights. Uh, to join us for Consider This, the unique Bible study. And as you see on the slide there, it's a continuing series on the study of the Beatitudes, and that's on Wednesdays. And uh, as always, we would not be sitting here without our good buddies. And also, I just want to say thank you again. New clothes. Yes. yes. Well, good thing, because now you're on this side of the camera. Yes. Ah. New clothes. Yes. And I also want to thank you to Patty, too. She gave me some extra money. Oh, yes. So, yes. I had a nice shopping experience a few weeks ago. Yeah. So now I think we're going to get you on this side of the camera more and more. We're going to figure out how to uh, maybe get you, like, a control uh, over here or uh, something. That would be nice. Maybe. Anyway. Maybe. Yes. And maybe. Uh, as this next slide uh, shows, and thank you for... Uh, those of you are giving Pastor Rick Grace as he, as he works on this CD, but uh, obviously this Valentine's uh, banquet concert has been just monopolizing mm -hmm. his time. Um, and one of our friends uh, said the kindest thing, I think, that just kind of sums up the fact of you know, that you all out there are learning about Grace because mm -hmm. um, she said, anybody that knows and loves Pastor Rick 
we don't care when we get the CD. We mm -hmm. know we're going to get it. Yeah. And yeah. so thank you for extending He's been working on it. Day and, and day. night. Yes. And day and yes. night and day I will come out at like 2.30 in the morning. He'll be sitting in his yeah. office. Yeah. So... Yeah. Yes. And it doesn't, I mean, when you say, you know, he's he's learning all these songs, but I mean, he has to do every chord and make up all those mm -hmm. charts. And, and it's a process in yes. the lyrics and all of that. So anyway, but guess what? It's time to end the show. And as always, I'm going to end with a prayer and it's going to come up on the screen so you can read along. Dear Lord, thank you so much for my life. Thank you for the grace you have given to me. You have changed my life, and I am so grateful. I pray for wisdom. I pray for understanding, and I pray for knowledge. May you continue to transform my heart, removing the negative patterns in my life and breaking the chains of bondage. Fill me with your righteousness and help me to be a person of character. Inspire me to find new ways to show appreciation and kindness to my spouse, family, friends, and others. I pray to grow closer to you, and I pray for the strength to say the three words you long to hear. Change me, Lord. And we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thanks for joining us on the Good News Show. And we hope to see you soon. Bye-bye.